David Sorensky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. Okay, we are in front of my Goldfinger display because we're back. Yes, we are. We're back talking about Lock & Co. Now, you can see a couple of representations. I've got quite a few Lock & Co. hats. I've got personal hats that I've worn to Wimbledon. My wife has Lock & Co. I've got, I'm looking at it right now from Russia with Love. Lock & Co. Uh, this is a hattery that has been associated with my life, the Zeritsky household, for some time. And recently, you probably saw, if you haven't already, we'll put a link below. We just reviewed the Odd Job hat that they came out with in Phase 1. Now, part of Phase 2 just jumps right into Connery world. And um, folks, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, we have it right here. Now, I am I have not opened this up, but this is this is the hat that Sean Connery, James Bond, wears in the absolute epic, dare I say, one of the most iconic films of the James Bond franchise, Goldfinger. Now, not everybody puts it as their favorite film, but certainly most people believe that it's hollowed ground. What I mean by that is that it's got all the tropes and the formulas, and it's got Bond doing sports. I mean, he plays a mean game of golf. We've got a couple things from Penfold right behind me, but in this case, we've got some sartorial kit in. Oh, ho, 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 we've got a new hat box. Which, by the way, I may have made mention in the last review, the hat box itself is kind of worth the price of admission. I mean, it's got the, the gold 007 emblazoned on it. It's got the beautiful Lock & Co. hatters, St. James Street, London. It's got that incredible moniker that we've all come to know and love over time. But interestingly enough, we're in the 60th anniversary of James Bond. And this is kind of an anniversary look and color to it. Uh, by the way, this thing, solid. Could you hide in it in an earthquake? I think that's pushing the boundaries, but it's going to protect your hat. And that's what this is for. It's not just beauty, but as you can see by my odd job one, I've used it as part of the display because when you're not wearing these hats, they are pretty much works of art. Yeah, I'm biased. So let me open this up. It's got a nice tight grip to it. I'm gonna have to use my muscles, whichever ones I have. So this is, uh, this is traveled all the way from London, England. So it's got a nice tight grip on it. Yeah, I'm not making this up. I, this is, this is on there pretty good. <laughs> there we go. All right, so that's well protected. That is just a cloud of goodness. Oh, oh, we've got, um, a, a, I've got some little goodies in here I did not expect. We've got a guide to hat grooming. I'm gonna read this, this is cool. Oh, it's got some really vintagey old time pictures in here. Uh, using a soft bristle hat brush, gently stroke the hat in short movements. Oh, I didn't realize it was gonna be such a saucy read. This will remove any dust caught in the fur and silk fibers. Oh, okay, it's, it's practical. It's not a bodice ripping book. Uh, yeah, so this is really cool. This is polishing top hats, tips for top hats, different things regular hats. I will read this and probably display it because, again, it's got that old world charm. Then we've got a book. I believe this is going to be a lookbook. Well, it's, oh, it's all about a book on Lock & Co., the history. And if you know anything about my channel, anything about me, you know I like the journey, the story of these hats. So I'm going to absolutely read through this. And most importantly, I want to know which world leader that is right there, because to me, that looks like a sheet. But I may be corrected. I don't know. We'll see. You know, I'm going to read through this book. Uh, oh, these are very cool pictures. Yeah, I'm already giving this away. It's, I feel like it's spoilers, but this is going to be a good read. And I love that there's a certain amount of pomp and circumstance with these, but we'll gently put the cover down so we can get into the meaty goodness of the inside and we're starting to get a, a hint already i'm sure you could have told by oh oh wow okay so first of all a lot of protection for this hat wow this feels so nice and light so there's plastic around the top we're going to take that off to reveal ladies and gentlemen oh my gosh this oh mm -hmm. yeah absolutely iconic now there is a hang tag on here You've come to a channel where we show 
all the detail. Hope you're okay with it. Sit back. I hope you poured yourself a martini. So the Lock & Co Hatters hang tag is right there. Beautiful. Well positioned in the hat itself. Uh, so this is called the Stoke in large. Retails, it's got the retail price on it for 445 pounds. Uh, again, you're gonna, you, you've hit a very biased audience. I have a lot, a lot of Lock & Co hats. The history, the story, the branding, but also the way this is made, the attention to detail that's put into this is well worth the price. So I would take investment out of the equation. And then they've got another hang tag to which I didn't see on the odd job one. So that's, this is really cool. Let me get nice and close here. Look at that. That's cool, ladies and gentlemen. James Bond is back in action. So it's, it's got the James Bond poster, but on the back it has the Stoke Goldfinger. And it's got a little bit of verbiage here, of which I have not read, but you know what to do. Story time, ladies and gentlemen, get comfy. Hand blocked exactly as per the original. <laughs> That's so cool. As worn by Mr. Bond and Goldfinger, this stealthy black Panama hat is finished with the familiar striped ribbon and a genuine leather sweatband summer 60s style you you had me at hand blocked but summer 60s style sounds pretty good so this is a size 59 seven and a quarter large that's pretty much my size um i waver between a 59 and a 60 because i got a giant kibasi right this is this is like a you know a giant mardi gras float hanging on my neck and body what i'm saying is i got a big head no jokes. Thank you. I've got enough of them. So I'm going to take off the hang tag very carefully. Why? Because for those of you that may display this when you're not wearing it, the hang tag makes a beautiful display and it comes off like that nice and easily. I'll put it down with this. But hats are to be worn, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if you heard the news. First of all, let's take a look at the inside. That leather band has the 007 and the Lock & Co hatters. It's got a nice gold finish on there. And there is the Stoke. Now, why are they calling it the Stoke? I have an answer. And I, I actually have props, because of course I do. So Stoke Pogis, which before it turned into a residential place, was a beautiful golf place, uh, Stoke Park Club. As you can see here, these are golf balls that I actually purchased when I was there. Stoke Park Club, there it is. When I was there touring, um, it is where, of course, Goldfinger and Bond play for the gold bar in the movie Goldfinger. And we love ourselves a good sporty Bond moment. And that's one of the most iconic Bond moments. So the Stoke itself, this, the very name of this hat, harkens back to the club where they played golf in Goldfinger. But this is the hat. And again, it's blocked just like it. Um, the band itself has a representation, I'll say an homage, an artistic interpretation. Because one of the things that that this company said early on when they launched this hat deference, this, this hat opportunity for us to own these, is that things weren't going to be bang on. They weren't going to be 100% to that in most cases. Now, there may be some upcoming hats, spoiler alert, that are bang on. But this does have the same blocking. Um, and so, now I will say right off the bat, that is not how I would wear it. I'm going to bring down the front of the brim, just so. I'm going to line it up because he is anal, ladies and gentlemen. But Connery had a little bit of a, a dip to the front of the hat. Now, this is made out of straw, right? So you don't want to be too crazy with this as far as this is concerned but i am going to train this now it's not trained right now please easy on the comments you know david that doesn't look like it does from the movie etc uh but i will train this and training it means that you're going to line it up and over time as you wear it you can actually gently so this doesn't break shape the hat itself so let me uh yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much doing a spread eagle right now, but you don't need to see that or know that. Get that off of there. Uh, but this is, this is sort of how it's going to look. Bryn coming down, Bryn 
kind of up in the back on the side. And I will tell you right now, perfect fit, perfect, perfect, perfect fit. Yes, this size large, it's not too big if a little bit of a wind comes up, but here's the real test with a hat for me. This is my little test. If I go like this and it doesn't like fall down and go elsewhere, then the hat fits. This is a black hat and I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk about this hat because it's the summertime right now as we're doing this. This was probably worn in the fall. This can be worn in many different seasons. Certainly, I would say that it could be worn in the summertime, but it is a black hat. So black, any black color like this black NPL cashmere is going to attract the sun. Sun! It's just going to drink it all in because of the color. But because this is so lightweight, because it breathes, because it's it's just got an, a certain airiness to it, you're not going to become overheated. So it's going to combat the fact that it's black. Now there should be a question in your mind. I do love this thing. Sorry, my my iPhone acts as a mirror, so you'll you'll excuse me. I'm having a real moment here. Um, there was a release of this before. Now, not with all the branding or the pomp and circumstance or the booklets, but there was a release of this before. And here is my original one. Now, the question is, is that are these different? And I would say that they are different enough. Now, if you own the original, you're going to know the original that they release. The band itself is wider than this particular band and very different. This has a little bit more of a jaunty, a little bit more aligned to what you see in the movie than this wider band itself. And also, obviously, you could see that the inside's very different. It doesn't have any of the, uh, of the markings that you saw or see in this one with the 007. And these are hidden. You won't see these on the outside. So the branding is subtle as, I, as we all like it to be. Um, and this one itself was called the Palm Springs. But in essence, they are very similar because I believe they are the same hat. Now this one I've worn over time, it's trained. See that? It's trained, meaning I've shaped the sides, I've shaped the front, it's not coming down too much. It's just right because I've shaped it over time. This is what you can get. Oh, he's got a gold bar as a head. How creative. This, <laughs> is what you can eventually get from your particular one, the Stokes. And so this is just one of these things where, you know, you want to be thinking about um, the details of this, this, this wonderful kind of Palm Springs essence hat will live with you and become a part of you over time. You can see that it's not quite as shaped as this one. These hats, and this is like my big imploring and begging of you, what you don't want to see them as is displays or investments. These hats, my ladies and gentlemen, are made to be worn. If you're a woman, you can wear it. If you're a man, you can woman wear it. It's pretty unisex, but like a good watch, like a shirt, these are luxury items. I get it. They're investments. You know, that first mar or scratch or barbecue sauce that you get on here, you're going to be like, ah! but it's made to be worn. It's made to be used. This is a hattery that's been around for a long time, not to make show pieces, but to make hats that are made to be worn by human beings. So you want to hair, you want to wear this. I will be wearing this. I've got a couple occasions coming up where I'm going to need some blockage from the sun. I'm not going to go with my typical lock and co kind of Monte Cristo look. I'm going to go with this to start to break this in. You play with it. It gets, sorry to be like this, but it gets part of, you know, your, your, your sweat and tears as a part of the hat, but then it becomes a part of who you are. So it starts out as a replica from Goldfinger and Connery and James Bond, and that's incredibly special. But over time, these hats become more you than they do James Bond. And that's something important to remember. All right. Well, thank you to Lock & Co. This was very exciting. I hope to actually be visiting them when I'm over in London in September and October. So who knows, maybe there'll be some more surprises, more hats to discuss. And of course we will bring them to you. But in the meantime, let's start training this baby. This has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. We'll see you all real soon.
Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.